Hey everybody, how's it going? Well, it's Monday. And I'm out here doing a little content. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask all of my subscribers to do me a favor. It's not hard. Well, it might be for some, I don't know. <laughs> don't be alarmed. It's not going to hurt. I need your forgiveness. That's right, I need your forgiveness. Well, in my last video I said I was going to do uh, an unboxing video. I know some of you really enjoy unboxing videos. I think people do in general because there's there's a swath or plethora of videos on YouTube that are purely of unboxing types. Of all matter of things, people just like to watch somebody open a package. And I can understand. It's fun to open packages and get something, you know, like, ooh, what's in the box? You know, it's all kind of mysterious. Oh, I'm going to open this box that I got, you know, let's see what's in there, you know? So people live vicariously through others opening boxes. We're a curious species. We are. So I might not get kicks out of that. They're like, well, what's the big deal? It's, it's not me opening that box. Why should I be excited for them to do it? Man? That's a fair argument. But anyway... Where's it going with this? Oh yeah, unboxing video. So I was intended, well, I was planning on doing an unboxing video. It's been a while since I've done one. What lanterns. And I said in my last video I had something coming and I was gonna do an unboxing video. Well, sadly it's been almost a week since I got this item and I didn't do a video. I was too tired, uh, I was late, and, uh, well, the weekend came and I was going to do one. I tried several times. I did not like the content that I created. Nothing seemed to be, you know, right on brand. Uh, and if I did make something that was passable, I didn't get a chance to upload it. So, yeah. I don't like... I know I've done it. Okay? I know I've done it. I know I've uploaded videos that had a few days on it, so they were stale, right? But I do like to upload fresh videos when I'm done recording and then send it off to YouTube. And usually I have the time to do it. And it takes about 30, sometimes 40 minutes to upload a video that's about 15 to 19 minutes long. So what I have to do is, so the computer doesn't go to sleep and foul up my upload, which it does, <laughs> um, I'll open up another browser and ha throw in another video just to play because it won't go to sleep if it's playing something but if it's uploading something it will try and go to sleep technology yeah double edged sword right anyway so I, I I tried and every time I tried to make a video this weekend it was heavy noise intrusion Either it was leaf blowers, lawn equipment of any variety, uh, neighbors playing in their yard, which I'm not going to discourage them. It's just what it is, you know. I, I don't want to sound like a cranky old man saying, oh, you know, but it was, a, it was an intrusive sound. It wasn't something I wanted as a background sound in my video. And I like to have, you know, some background noises is unavoidable. It really is. But I do like to have something that's more, am not ambient, but subtle, right? They're doing construction across the street right now, and they have been for the last year, two years actually. Um, so yeah, it is what it is. But I uh, can't stop the world from my videos. And if I really want ultimate peace and quiet, then I would come out here late at night where that is achieved, but I'm usually tired. And I'm usually repeating myself, and I'm tired, you know, I'm not, I'm not, it's not the quality that I want to present, okay? But anyways, we are doing it today. 
we're going to show you the lantern that I unboxed almost a week ago and I will share it with you now most of you who follow me on Facebook have already seen it but there's those of you who are not on Facebook and you haven't seen it so for you guys this one's for you so we are bringing to the bench this guy yeah this is the lantern I the last lantern I purchased the most recent addition to the collection that's right the most recent addition to the collection You hear that? That's quite a ruckus, huh? <laughs> oh well. Well, this is not a, a monarch. This is not a victor. This is a royal. That's right. This is a Deets royal. And what sets this apart from the monarch is the size. In theory, it's essentially the same size but the ferret's larger, and so is the burner. The burner is a number two size burner, just like on a cold blast, like a number two cold blast. So this lantern, uh, this particular model or generation of Royal dates to about 1900, um, has a last most recent patent of, nine, of 99. Sorry, I got a little congestion. Um, of 99 so I probably would be right around June of 99 I believe that's the same last patent on my uh, Deeds uh, Monarch my first generation Monarch so that being said um, the interesting uh, details that are similar to other Deeds Lanterns on this particular one uh, it's interesting because well I'll show you So the, the burner cone is very similar. It's the same one to the one on my Blizzard, okay? It's a bayonet style locking burner cone. So it goes down and you twist it. So that's pretty neat and that came right about 1900, okay? Um, it has the same size of filler spout as first generation Blizzard and other Deets lanterns. Um, so that fits right in the 1900 era. Uh, now, what makes this 1900, or maybe even 99, is the globe plate. The globe plate, as you can see, has cross wire guards. But, notice the bracket, the clip there. And that these are soldered into a slot under the globe plate. Okay. Now, that what that means is I'll show you. Here's the blizzard, my f early blizzard. Okay. As you can see, the burner cones is the same. Okay, and the fount is the same, same size, same design, everything. Okay, but the glow plate has the, the guards folded over and crimped into the plate, okay? Subtle, small detail, but it, it, it is a detail that is not similar. So this, this blizzard dates to right about maybe 1900, 1901, uh, because of these wire guards that are crimped into the lip of the glow plate uh, compared to being uh, soldered into the bottom of the glow plate uh, together. So this is the the new design that came out right around 1900, 1901. This design is the earlier design. Um, so yeah, but essentially, you know, it's a small detail, but it will tell you more or less where your lantern falls into production. Um, we're not going to go into all the details and the nitty gritty about the blizzard, 
We're just using this as a side example compared to when this was made. Bring you back up there. Now, that blizzard, you all know how I feel about that. That's a fun lantern. I love that thing. Um, you know, that technically was my very first blizzard. That's right. I didn't even own a blizzard. Not even a late model blizzard. Not even, I didn't have any blizzards. <laughs> I, was, I was looking for one. Mm -hmm. And where that one comes into play, reason why I have it is because I bought a CT ham that happened to have a very early first generation blizzard globe in it. It was a ruby flashed globe. Very rare, very rare. So that, that was a very good score. That globe was hitting the lottery because they are very rare and therefore can be very expensive. Um, so when I showed that globe, then I got a message from uh, the Antique Lantern. That would be Lantern Joe. And he says, hey, I have the lantern for that globe. So he sent me a picture of that one. And I'm like, ah. So we worked out a deal. I traded him one of my lanterns for, for that one. And uh, so, yeah. And I love that thing. I've never regretted that trade at all. I, I'm totally good with it. Um, so anyway, getting back to this guy. The Royal. This thing's all original. I have not done a thing to it. See, Deets Royal. Soldered in bottom. Now the globe is one I had on hand. The globe that it came with was a large cold blast style, early cold blast style. Uh, unmarked, just a generic replacement. Not a good fit for this. I mean, they had it in there, but it was very tight. It was hard to remove. I had to be very careful to remove that globe. But anyways, had this amethyst, uh, you know, manganese, hot blast globe that I had on hand, so I put that in there for now. Um, but the cool thing about this, I like the patina, I like the age on it, okay? It has very subtle, minor surface rust that could clean off very easily if I so choose. Uh, but I like this tag. It has this tag, see? Yeah. It has a little brass tag on this old lanyard. And... So when I saw this on eBay, that's right, I got off the of eBay, I was like, that's really neat. I don't have a round tube Royal. Um, that thing looks complete, looks really cool, looks very straight, and it has a really neat tag. Who knows what that was designed for, why that was added. I would imagine that was part of a, um, well, not a collection, but uh, it was part of a stock of lanterns and they were numbered. So when uh, a company had to use them, they would write down the number when it was out on a job. And when it came back, then they would check it back in so they could keep track of their stock, right? Makes sense. Uh, I think a lot of companies, contractor companies that were, you know, very fairly successful had a method of keeping track of what lanterns are out on a job and which ones are in so they can keep inventory. So it's easily an inventory type of tag. Uh, it might have been used in a mine. I don't know. They used similar brass tags for miners when they would go into a shaft uh, when for a shift. You know, then they would take, they would put up a tag. Uh, they had a number tag to them that would uh, indicate to the uh, the foreman uh, or the owner who who was in the mine at the time. So, not saying that this was used in a mine. It could have been. Uh, it could have been part of a mining company. Now, of course, we know that mine mining or miners used carbide mostly and especially by the time that this lantern was uh manufactured they were yeah they were using carbide later but they were using either candles or uh the small oil um torches on their caps so these were usually used in locations to light an area okay maybe like a a, a, a shaft station or something like that uh or a tool room or something then they would use these uh, not necessarily for, you know, in the in the, the haulage tunnels or anything. They would use different means. But um, I have seen pictures of tubular lanterns in mines at times. And mostly in stations and stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, it's possible. But this thing is in really good shape. So it, it didn't see a whole lot of hard use or abuse. But whatever the case is, it's a great piece. And I really like it. So 
let's get this, let's get, let's at least light it for y'all. I have, I have burned it. I should oil it because it is stiff, but. No. Ah. Nice, 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 nice. I like that. Very nice. Not bad, huh? <laughs> That's right. That's a pretty good flame, I think. Not bad, right? Looks good. I think so. Yeah. So, I've been asked, are you going to clean it up? Are you going to do a little restoration on this? My answer is I don't think so. Um, it's in very good shape. doesn't look like it needs any rescuing or any rust abatement. Um, so, essentially, I think I'm just going to leave it. Yeah. It looks cool the way it is. And if I did any cleaning, then I would have to clean up this tag, which some people might do. Myself, I really kind of like the Survivor aesthetic about this, and that's becoming more my, my, um, my taste. That's more and more my taste, more and more every time I get a lantern, the less I want to do to it. But I don't know. I might clean it up. Who's to say? I haven't decided yet. So I'm open to suggestions, you know, but it wouldn't be a very aggressive cleanup. It would be very mild and it would look nice. It would still have its patina and all that jazz, but yeah, I haven't decided yet. And eventually I'll get the proper globe for it because I had one on hand, but I put it in my recent crystal. So, you know, I think that's a fitting frame for a marked number zero tubular Dietz globe, but I'll find another one. They turn up ever so often. Um, so yeah, but it, for, for the time being, this thing is great. And I do believe I'll be taking it on my birthday camp out in April. So if I take it on a camp out, I, I don't need a Mark Globe for it to, you know, to serve that purpose. But anyways, it's a great piece. It burns great. And I've done practically nothing to it except for just putting in this globe and adding some fuel. The wick is an old wick. It's, it might be even be the original wick. Who's to, who's to say? It might have been replaced once. Who knows? But it is old. It's probably the era of this lantern. So there you go. All right, friends. Well, I hope this video, late as it is, uh, was enjoyable. I hope that you don't mind me <laughs> you know, not doing an unboxing with this one as I was planning on. But here we are having a nice smoke. A nice lantern and a good old conversation. There we go. I uh, just want to give a shout out to my new subscribers. I appreciate your subscription. I've, thanks for uh, contributing to my channel. And, uh, you know, comments are always welcome. And I enjoy reading them and, uh, you know, responding to uh, comments too. So I try to stay up with uh, those that, you know, leave a comment. So it's always good to hear from my subscribers. Absolutely. Thanks again. Have a great week, and we'll see you guys again on the next video. All right. Bye-bye.